Spurs lose again, this time to the Rockets. What are some takeaways? And have the Spurs made any strides? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs. We're here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope everybody's having a great work week. We'll get you through it right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, you guys are the everydayers. We appreciate you. Subscribe to Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast, YouTube, Ken 5 Plus app, iTunes, Spotify. The list goes on and on. Check it out. Subscribe to Locked On Spurs. Today's episode was brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app right now. Create an account. Use code Locked On NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. What are we talking about today? We're going to look back at yesterday's Spurs-Rockets game. Yes, another loss. What went wrong? What are some of my takeaways from the uh, Spurs' 17th consecutive loss? Yikes. Also, we're going to also have James Pledger of San Antonio Sports Star. He's going to hop on. We're going to ask, is the rebuild stalled? Like, where is it right now? Also, believe it or not, we found some strides. Yes, the Spurs actually have been making strides despite on a losing streak. That's coming up next right here on Locked On Spurs. But, yeah, last night, about last night, well, that losing streak did not come to an end, unfortunately. They lost to the Houston Rockets of all teams, too, 93-82. to Look, <clears throat> it was an ugly game on both sides. Rockets were shooting the ball horribly. Spurs shooting the ball horribly. So that was a wash. But here are my takeaways, and it kind of leads into what we just talked about right now, the – the Rockets playing just as bad. Takeaway number one, this Spurs team did not maximize on the Rockets having an off night. This was a chance for the Spurs to pounce on Houston. They were shooting the ball, right? 35%, I'm sorry, 34% for Houston throughout the entire game. They went 12 for 39 from the field, 30% shooting. Spurs had an off shooting night ahead of them for the, from the Rockets. So in other words, they got an opponent who's just not having a, shoot, a great shooting night. They didn't capitalize on that. They didn't. They were just as bad. So that's takeaway number one. It's like a sign of maturity for them to realize that they got a team that's just having a bad night, and they couldn't take advantage of that. So that's the biggest takeaway. Just this team still needs to learn those little, you know, things that can help them get, uh, you know, wins, those intangibles. You got a Rockets team that's shooting not lights out. So – Connect on your shots. And look, I know it's easier said than done. I'm sitting here. I'm not on the court. But the point is, they could have had a chance to jump on Houston. They did not. First, they shot 35% for the game and only connected on five three-pointers out of 41 attempts for 12%. 12% three-point shooting. Bad field goal percentage. Bad shooting from the field overall. Bad three-point shooting from the line. Didn't even add for a mix. Spurs shot themselves in the foot, and that's takeaway number one. They didn't capitalize on an off-shooting night from Houston. Takeaway number two, hopefully this is not a pattern. Spurs giving up second-chance opportunity, especially on the old boards, the offensive boards. That was a big issue versus Chicago, a big reason why they lost at home. Uh, even Trey Jones spoke about it. I was there at the press conference. He said, yeah, uh, offensive boards, that, that's what pretty much doomed us. Popovich said he never seen the team give up 20-plus Offensive rebounds. It reared his ugly head again. Now, it wasn't 24 or anything like that, but the Spurs gave up 15 second-chance opportunities to Houston on the offensive rebounds. Again, this is a young Spurs team, a team that can't afford those little intangible things that can trip them up during a game. It happened. 15 offensive rebounds for Houston. Those second-chance opportunities really helped the Rockets get the win. Look at the final score. It wasn't a big blowout. You know, 93 82. You know, so, but again, those little things helped Houston uh, secure the win over your Spurs. And the final takeaway from the loss to Houston is just, uh, you know, Wimby can't do it all. And what I mean by that is he had himself a double double. He had about 15 points, uh, about 10 rebounds uh, versus Houston in about 33 minutes. So, yeah, 15 points, I'm sorry, 18 rebounds, three assists, five blocks. Now, he did have five turnovers, at least of him having a minus 12. But the point is, he needs help. Okay, so where did that help come from? Uh, 31 minutes for Devin Vassell, 14 points. Okay, fine. But I'm, I guess I'm targeting Keldon Johnson here. 
37 minutes, three for 14 from the field. He went over nine from the field. This is the guy that the Spurs, uh, you know, pretty much put, made the face of the franchise pre Wimby era. You know, he is the longest tenured spur. He's been in the system for quite a while. He needs to be more consistent. He has not really been too consistent as uh, 12 points for the night. He was a minus 18. That was the worst in the plus minus column for the Spurs. And that's takeaway number three. You know, just where is it going to be going to get help? You think it would be from Keldon. You think it would be from Devin. Look, look, Keldon, he had 15 points. I mean, he did. I'm sorry, he had 12 points. Excuse me. And he did have seven rebounds and four steals. So there's that. But you need more. This team needs everybody hands on deck from Keldon to Devin. Uh, Sohan, another uh, off shooting night, three for 11. He went one for five from the three line for seven points, a minus eight, and six rebounds, and two assists. But the point is, if I'm looking at somebody to be the, I guess in this case, the Robin to the Batman, that being Wimby, then I'm looking at Keldon. Yeah, maybe real close to Vassell, and Keldon didn't bring it. So he just had a bad offensive night. Look, everybody on the Spurs squad did. Everybody had off shooting nights, but. Three for 14 for Keldon, 0 for from the three line. You got you need to get more out of him. So, yeah, Spurs get another chance to break the streak, not the good streak, you know, in a bad losing streak. Wednesday night versus the Lakers is going to be a tough task ahead of them. Hopefully the Spurs can get the W and snap this losing skid. Coming up next, we have James Pledger of San Antonio Sports Star. We're going to talk about the rebuild. We're also going to talk about certain strides. Yes, there's some positive stuff coming out of uh, the Spurs world, that Spurs court right now. So we found some, so check it out. That's coming up next right here on Lockdown. But before we bring in James Pledger, I want to talk to you about game time. Go to gametime.co right now, everybody. Look, you want to take the stress out of finding tickets, you got to go to game time. It's there for you. It's going to make it your life so easy. You don't have to worry about buying tickets to your next event. Game time is the fast and easiest way to get tickets to all the sports and music and comedy and theater events near you. They got killer last minute deals. All in prices, views from the seat, best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Again, they have flash deals, zone deals, uh, lowest price guarantee, job loss protection, event cancellation protection. They got it all. What more do you need? Go download the game time app right now. And speaking of those zone deals, so basically, as you pick the section, game time will then pick the seats for an average savings of 18%. And the game time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will give you or credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of finding tickets. Download the Game Time app right now. Create an account. Use code Locked on NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Again, create an account. Redeem code L O C K E D O N N B A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Go hurry. Go do it right now. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked on Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And as promised, he is back, everybody. He is James Pledger, busy at work, and you can see him right now over there at the star. He is with San Antonio Sports Star 94.1. I guess you have not made it into Professor Xavier's class yet. You haven't gotten the official Xavier Institute of Higher Learning. You know, I... I think Scott Summers has stolen mine <laughs> because he knows that I naturally just lean towards Wolverine. Ah, yeah. So, like, because me and Wolby are close, ah. like, he obviously, they butt heads a lot. So, so he, he optic beamed it, like, from a distance and disintegrated it and making it seem like you're not part of the class. Yeah, he's trying to make he's trying to make a point, and he's being a real you know d about it. So, <laughs> well, I heard his brother Havoc is has your side though. Like uh, he, he has the back. <laughs> well, Havoc obviously at least has a level head on his shoulders. There you go. Now that we finished nerdy, now again he is James Pledger with San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on X at I am Pledger. And yeah, I'm wearing this again, everybody, because Pledger's a big X-Men fan, so I want to make him feel right at home, right here on Lockdown Spurs. Yeah, look at this. I got the uh, I got the patch, and then I got the uh, it comes with the elbow patch there. Oh. Uh, then, and by the way, do you like the OG 
colors? I do. I do. I do. That is definitely 90s X-Men. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now what James is going to why hurry up now so he can get on the on, on Amazon and order himself a sweater. So that's probably what he's going to do next. Hey James. Uh I got to ask you something. So, um we we know the Spurs are on the rebuild. We we get that. You know, they're not out of the woods yet. They took a big leap forward though with getting Wemby. Yay. But because this team is losing and record-wise is worse than last year's team. Could you say that the rebuild is stalled right now? Is the light at the end of the tunnel brighter, dimmer, or about the same? Um, at this very moment, it's the same light there was. I mean, we do have Wimby, but like my thoughts on where they are and will be in the rebuild Completely depends as I talk about all this offseason, mm-hmm. what they do with free agency, mm-hmm. what they do with this a lot of yeah. draft picks, what they do with their cap space. Yeah. Like that's important because you could tell with the Houston Rockets, veterans mean a lot to a to a young team. Mm-hmm. And the additions of Fred Van Vliet and Reggie Bullock, who was on the Spurs, by the way. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Boban Marjanovic, you know, people yeah. that have been in the league can help at least guide the younger players that have been a part of winning cultures and winning mm-hmm. organizations like Bullock with the Mavs and yeah. Van Fleet with the Raptors who won a title. Um, Boban Marjanovic, who was with the Spurs when they were, you know, in mm-hmm. the thick of things. Mm-hmm. Like, that, those are big things that they can use in terms of helping to teach right. how to take care of your body, how mm-hmm. to go about practice adjustments in game. Maybe the, the, the coaches can't do in the mm-hmm. moment because they can't burn a timeout at that point in time, but just different things within the course of a season game, uh, even just getting away, going to dinner, talking yeah. like different, different things that are very important to help, nurture and Mm -hmm. and lead a young group of players that has never been there, done that, or been a part of something like that. And if you look at the Spurs, where is that person on your roster? Where is that person that's been a part of a championship level roster? Where is that person that has been through battles in the playoffs? If we're going to define that, then Shetty Osman, right? I mean, technically he's been there, done that. I, Okay. I mean, if just by black and white letters of uh, sure. reading a book, then he does have championship experience. He knows what it gets to get. To, I mean, but but I get it. These are you've got not, one voice in the room. Yeah, exactly. You got one voice. I think this young team need mo- multiple voices. But that's the thing. I think with this rebuild and the fact that they're just racking up L's, one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, you know, are just are they are the slump buster for other teams now? Let's face it. Uh, and it's easy for a team that does lose a lot to yeah. fall into uh, a kind of mental depression or, mm-hmm. or, or find it hard to crawl out of it or yeah. things like that, where, you know, people that have been part of championship teams that have gone through roughs of a season mm-hmm. know how to get out of the other side and continue yeah. to do certain things where yeah. hope may be lost. Yeah amongst the youth that don't know when they're not seeing the progress or at least immediate results. No, we're talking about, uh, we're nerding out right now with X-Men and Cyclops and the beam, but know that it, it kind of leans into with this rebuild thing, because if I'm, if this is what I like, this is, to me, it's what it's like. It's like Cyclops, he turned on his visor and we had a big beam come out and that's Wimby, but he hasn't adjusted it more where it's more of a fuller scope yet. And I think that's where they are. I think it's stalled. I think they <laughs> took a big leap towards that end of the light, uh, the tunnel, and he, you know, the Cyclops, boom, optic blast comes out. But then it's like, okay, is that all you got, Cyclops? You know, that's it? Because Juggernaut's okay. He's, he's taking it. You know, uh, Magneto's whatever. And I think that's where sure. the Spurs are. You know, they're just, we got Wimby, and then, yay, look at us. And then teams are just smacking them up. So I, well, I think, think of, they just Think of it this up. way. Think of it this way, if you want to stay on your, your X-Men yeah. uh, kind of uh, hyperbole here. Look at this team as there is no Scott Summers. Mm-hmm. There, there, there is no Gene Gray. There, right. is, there is no Wolverine. There is 
all they have are a bunch of young, gifted children. There's no, all they have is Charles Xavier. That's yeah. it. He like doesn't Ju really like go Jubilee, into battle. Like Jubilees in the mix. And yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, Ford there's no teachers there. on yeah. the team. There's, there's yeah. no leaders. There's no, nobody to help guide the way and, yeah. and to bring along the students, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. And that's kind of what this is. And you're going up against a, a, a bunch of Omega, Omega level mutants. Yeah. Basically they're, they're going to get dusted. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's where I think the, in my opinion, I think the rebuild is just, it hit a wall where we're going, we're, we're good. And then it, boom, it smacked up into it because part of the rebuild is bringing in pieces to help further that along. Now, I think going into this season, my opinion, I think they probably saw last year's squad say, hey, we're bring them back. They get, they went through the grind. They got smacked up and down. No way they're going to want to go through that again. And here we are, you know, and throwing Wemby, still not enough. And let's face it, he's a 19-year-old. He's still adjusted to the league. I mean, you saw last night versus Houston. I mean, guys are just going at him and then mm -hmm. flexing on him when they scored in, in that first half. I forgot who it was. I think it was Jabari Smith, I believe. But It was. Yeah. So – I see that like, okay, we got ourselves and we're doing the X-Men team. We got ourselves a, uh, I, I, who, who would be a comparable X-Men to Wimby? You know, uh, you know, we got a uh, gifted student, you know, a, a young be, Bobby Drake. Sure. We'll go with that. Bobby, we'll with Bobby that. Drake, Iceman eventually yeah. becomes an Omega level mutant. Right. But, he's but not, he was yeah, a young kid at one point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and, and let's face it, today's league, you need multiple stars. You know, look at, uh, you know, the Clippers. They're trying to do, you know, star power with their their guys. You look at the Lakers. You look at Denver, Murray, and Joker. So it takes more than just Wimby, and I think they'll get there. So in my opinion, I think it's stalled. But do you think this year that stalled rebuild would have a little bit of a breakthrough as the season moves on, or you think it'll just be stalled throughout the entire season? I mean, you hope so, but, I mean, look at a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a bunch of young kids and they went through multiple seasons of trying to get and they kept adding pieces with yeah. only youth and, and no veterans. Like and the Orlando Magic is another example. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it it looked awful until it did. And mm -hmm. sometimes if they're going to continue down this youth movement and mm -hmm. continually just youth, 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 youth. It's going to take a sec for it to click. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. happen overnight and it didn't for those teams. And they were committed to the move youth movement. Mm -hmm. And then there are teams that commit to it that really hadn't found their way out of it, like mm -hmm. Detroit. And, you know, it, look how long it took for mm -hmm. both the Pacers and the, the Kings. Mm -hmm. And it took a trade between the two to really kind of jumpstart both of those organizations because yeah. You know, the Kings were stuck with multiple guards mm -hmm. and no no way of, like, really two ball dominance mm -hmm. fighting over the ball and no real play to yeah. kind of get them to work off each other. While up in Indiana, they had yeah. a lot of young bigs and Miles and, and uh, Sabonis. Mm -hmm. And finally, they're like, all right, you give us your young big. We'll give mm -hmm. you our young guard. We'll flip it. That way we've each got one of each. And right. all of a sudden it starts to come together for both teams because they have the pieces that aren't colliding with one right. another. They found complementary pieces. The good news is, is that the Spurs are at least in position to make power moves to bring in good players, solid veterans because of the, the war chest they have of picks, money, and yes, flippable players currently on the roster. So if they, they can get bold and swing for the fences and they can afford any price tag or afford, you know, free agency numbers of their monies, if, if, if the contracts and max deals, they're in a good position. It's just mm -hmm. as Pledger mentioned, you know, we have to wait and see if that happens. Hey, coming up next, though, we're going to ask a big question. And I get it. The Spurs are mounting up L's, but. Are they making any strides despite the bad season start? This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Hey, I want to talk about FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. That is a winning $5 money line bet. 
That's 150 bucks if your team wins. So you've been thinking about joining FanDuel. There's no better time to get on the action than right now. The app is so easy to use. It's a wide range of betting options that include spreads, player props, over and unders, so much more. You're going to have fun with the FanDuel app. That's where you got to go get it right now. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and get the NBA season going. Keep on going with the NFL season. It's all ready to go for you at FanDuel. You'll have fun. I have fun on it. You'll have fun on it. Check out those futures. Check out those, I mean, just player props, everything. You want to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on right now. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Also, I want to talk to you about Muslingers drive Through Coffee. You go to Muslingers drive Through Coffee right now, San Antonio, 2404,000 Oaks Drive. That's in the 281-1604 area, servicing the uh, San Antonio community for so long. They're a proud local sponsor of Locked On Spurs, and they got you covered when it comes to beverages. They got Dairy Alternatives, the Red Bull Infused Lightning Bolt Series, the Alien, which is a hat tip to Victor Wimbanyama, full can of Red Bull, Kiwi, Green Apple, very good. They have the signature drink called the Mudslinger. We also have the OG OJ, and that's the Orange Julius recreated only at Mudslinger's drive through Coffee. They have the Sub-Zero, and that's a hat tip to UTSA's Frank Harris. Look, they got it all over at Mudslinger's. Open every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Over 300 five-star reviews cannot be wrong. No way they're wrong. Friendly staff, great service, great menu, everything you need in one stop to get your day going or keep your day going on only at Muslinger's drive through Coffee. Find them on social media, on X, Threads, Spotify, uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. The list goes on and on at Muslinger, S-A-T-X. That is all one word. Go to Muslinger's drive through Coffee, San Antonio, 2404,000 Oaks Drive. Hey, life is too short for bland coffee. Hey, everybody, this is Nathan Ray Clark from Criminal Minds and Modern Family, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs, hosted by Victor Wimbiana's new best friend, Jeff Garcia. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with James Pleasure of San Antonio Sports Star 94.1. He is the host of Extra Innings, a great show. He's going to talk about that shortly. By the way, what is your mutant power? Mine? Yeah. I can see into the future. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm so glad. We're going to tap into James's X mutant, X-Men mutant powers right now and ask, what has he? What does he see in the future and what does has he seen in the past and the present as far as the Spurs making strides? Now, I get it. They're racking up L's, worst, one of the worst teams in the league. So we understand that, so don't come at us. But despite that, there's probably some progress. James, what are you seeing as, by way of progress uh, currently with the Spurs? I mean, they're not losing by 40 every night anymore. Yay. I mean, <laughs> that, that, you wanted progress, right? That, yeah, that's exactly. progress. That's I mean, progress. Yeah. Uh, there, there's progress we've seen. There's progress we've yet to see. They're still awful in third quarters coming out of the half, and, and there's no real discernible reason for why. Like, even the players can't put their fingers on it. Yeah. And I, I don't know if they're going in the locker room and getting drunk at the half or <laughs> – I kid, I kid, obviously. But uh, no, there's just something about this team that where it, it comes out of half and it's lost any momentum and it comes out relatively flat a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I hate to say this, but usually when a team is flat out of halves, uh, 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 out of off nights, uh, that's coaching. Mm-hmm. That falls on coaching, mm-hmm. right? Because th- those are when you make your adjustments. Those are when you, you set the table for the next round Mm -hmm. Uh, and the the Spurs have been late to adjust. Uh, They come out and game plans have not Mm -hmm. gone specifically well. And it's been a trend. Is Mm -hmm. it a trend they can break? Obviously they they should be able to break it at some point, but part of it might too also eventually come down to psyche mentally. A lot of people, Fans, I'm sure players are the same way. You come out, of the, you go into the half with a lead, or you're close, and you're like, "Oh man!" And then, like, it, it, you know, yeah. they go on a little run, and it's six turns into eight, and eight turns into yeah. a twelve point run, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, fans are going, "So this is how they blow their lead." <laughs> Mentally, that's got to have the same effect on a yeah. player. Like once things start to snowball in your head, you're like. Maybe you're pressing too hard to try and get out of it. Just mm-hmm. different things that uh, psychologically 
take its toll on a team yeah. as much as they do a fan base. Yeah. By the way, you, you strike me more as a forge mutant, you know, be able to make <laughs> things and then perhaps make yourself uh, one of these babies. You know, uh, yeah. I, I would love to be <laughs> able to forge something because I would, I would try and forge an answer to <laughs> fix the Spurs problems right yeah. now. Yeah. I know. And that's what I like about Pledger. He's actually a big time Houston sports fan, but he does, you know, share a little bit of a salute, a little bit of respect uh, to these hometown team right here on San Antonio. But, you know, James, for me, progress is the little thing. So, for example, uh, turnovers, small mm -hmm. sample size, but they have gone down uh, so far this month. In November, I think they were pushing like something about 16, 17 per game. Uh, as of right now, uh, they're about 14. So, hey, there's progress. Right there, they're maybe valuing the ball a little bit more. Uh, I think that shot um, selection, shot selection is getting better. Also, too, uh, you know, it goes without saying, Wimby is getting better and better and better. I mean, just recently you set an NBA record as a rookie, twenty and twenty, youngest twenty twenty there. Yep. So, so there is progress. Other thing too is I'm starting to notice that players communicate more often on the court. I saw it a lot in the first half versus Houston. I even asked. Uh, Jeremy Sohan about Vassell's communication on the floor, and he's saying, "Yeah." He goes like, "He's he was like saying, oh my god, it's like next level the way he's communicating." So I'm glad that at least they're, they're starting to talk with one another. Also, too, I, if you want by progress, then by progress they're recognizing the situation. I talked to Zach Collins recently, <laughs> and uh, I, I asked him, you know, hey, you know, fans are with you still even though it's pretty bad. And he said, yeah, we know. He goes, we're frustrated and perhaps more frustrated with them. And he's keeping the faith by saying, hey, it will get it right. So mm -hmm. they're aware of the issue. I'm glad about that. They're talking more. I'm glad about that. Their small sample size turnovers are coming down. So there you go, everybody. The silver line. You got to start I'm, somewhere, I'm, right? I'm, James, I'm trying to give us Spurs fans some hope for the season, man. Uh, for the season, at this point, we got to take the season for what it is. Uh, and mm -hmm. the first, the first twenty, uh, break it up into twenty game seasons, right? Yeah. The first season was a colossal dud. <laughs> we're we're into the second part of mm -hmm. the season, the second yeah. twenty game stretch. We're starting to see some minor improvement. Mm -hmm. We hope that improvement continues throughout mm -hmm. the rest of, and hopefully by the next twenty and the twenty after that. Mm -hmm. It's starting to look like a an ultra competitive roster that can compete with teams night in and night out. Right. Um, just quick aside here, I just want to get your opinion on this. Is the season already a wash for you? Is it is it already is it already cooked? I mean, do you do you feel like it's? I, I mean, it's, I, I'm I, at the point as, as far as making play in and moving beyond that. I think it's toast already. Like it, it would have to be. Yeah, a massive, yeah. massive turnaround. I know for this team to go on the type of run that it would need to be in that kind of conversation. Can you tap into which, your X Men powers right now and predict? Can you see that happening? No, but I can see things getting better as the season goes on. And, I, and the one thing I would, I would, if I'm going to tap into my power, I want to see what happens as we near the trade deadline. There are a lot of players that are on expiring deals that are big players, whether it's, you know, Pascal yeah. Siakam or uh, Ty Tyus yeah. Jones or, you know, it, just, it, it really, it, I say Tyus Jones, you know, Kill uh, Killian H Haynes, like, you know, mm -hmm. players at a position of need yeah. that if, if this Sohan point guard experiment does still not getting the results they want, mm -hmm. they can make a move for an impending free agent and right. hopefully have his rights to have a better path to retain him easier. Yeah. I think you need more time in the war room. I think you need more time in that war room right now. So set up your session, look into that war room crystal ball. You actually flex those mutant powers, James, because Spurs fans need some hope that there is going to be hope uh, towards there the end of the season. There's hope, yeah. But it, it, the hope is, it's not like, oh, this team's going to make a run and they're going to go no. to the finals and win a championship no. this year. That's not the hope no. we're looking I mean, for. Yeah. At this point, where the hope we're looking for is incremental progress mm -hmm. that hopefully starts to translate into more consistent winning. 
Yeah, and, and, and look, um, you know, obviously they the Spurs can fast forward that by getting aggressive at the trade deadline or this upcoming off season. So hell, there is there hell, hope. even even like trading away uh, Doug McDermott, who feels mm-hmm. almost like when you have a Seti Osman, like mm-hmm. it feels like a redundancy with Doug McDermott, and especially mm-hmm. when you have them on the court at the same time. Yeah. So like unloading a Doug McDermott for future picks or whatever it may, you know, maybe an, a, a young player that comes back in return mm-hmm. or just a veteran player of a, a position of need, mm-hmm. like any of yeah. those things help to at least put a spin on season that I don't want to say it feels lost at this point in juncture, mm-hmm. but at least to fans, it almost feels yeah. like a lost season because it, at the beginning of the year, last year, we heard, don't go to Vegas and bet on us. Yeah. At the beginning of the season this year, it's about learning to, it's about winning. It's about mm-hmm. trying to win games. Yeah. And, and part of that's learning how to win games, learning how to close out games, learning yeah. how to maintain leads. But it like the tone we were told has shifted and changed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And look, I think I'm already accepting the season for what it is. It's just still a rebuild season. And that's what it really is. You know, call it experimental, call it what you want. It really is still part oh, this of this season's an experimentation. Yeah. I guarantee you that. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And so there you go, Spurs fans. They are making some strides. If you want some positive steps, there you have it. Uh, by the way, I got your mutant name. I, I figured it out. How about this one? Since you can see into the future, fortune teller. Not not no good. Not not, not sitting well with you. Eh. Hmm? It's how, it's okay. I, about, I think we could workshop it a little more. How about mystic. I, I think we could workshop it nah, a little. Okay. All right. I tried, everybody. I tried. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to get Cyclops off his back right now. That's, that's all. I'm trying to help <laughs> him and you know help James do that because I'm I'm obviously I'm, I'm in the institute. James still is having some issues getting in because of Cyclops. You know what? It's just jealousy. That's all it is. It, it really jealousy. is. It really is, yeah. Because you could probably predict that you're going to end up with Jean Grey, right? I mean, anyway. she, shot me a, <laughs> she shot me a wink, and like I think he's had it out for me ever since. <laughs> he is James Pleasure of San Antonio Sports Star 94.1 on your radio dial, also on YouTube, Facebook. Oh, the list goes on and on. Tell us what's going on at the Star. What's going on with Extra Innings? Well, extra eggs with pleasure, six to seven weekdays. I catch you up on everything that's been going on, take a look at some of the big upcoming games, and talk about things like this with people like you, where we try and workshop because I am about giving a platform to the people. So if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you just have comments that you want to make, I am open to it. I am going to hear it, and I will try to, you know, bring certain people off the ledge or at least try and point out the problems that could be coming that you may be overlooking. Hey, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts, Ken's 5 Plus app, YouTube, Google Play, uh, the list goes on and on. No excuse for you to not check out Lockdown Spurs. But for James Mystic Pleasure, maybe? We're workshopping. We're workshopping. I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.